So in video compression, um, we have we have to identify key frames that contain important information. Okay, and then uh, typically you will find that uh, subsequent frames actually it is normal frames that does not have much changes to the information uh, or to the key points uh, or to the key frames. So you find a little movement or or a little changes to the image. So you choose a key frame and then the subsequent frames, you compress it. And you only store uh, um, the additional information or the small changes uh, from these key frames. So you will find, okay, you identify key frame here, a key frame here, in between them are frames that will be compressed and we will only store uh, the small changes that appears on that frames. So if the if we are looking at a video and you see a, a frame uh, with a human and a cat, and then you start to see here um, a totally empty frame that have no uh, nothing. Maybe uh, it's a, a view for the forest. So it means that now this is another keyframe. The the first keyframe have a human and some animal, and here totally view new frames that only have a forest. So you are not able to compress that keyframe, but any key fr any frames that come in between these two can be actually compressed. So you see here a, a, a human with the animal, and then the human with the animal moves a little bit inside the, the image and then uh, keep moving until they totally disappear, for example, and then we move to totally a new scene. So all this can be, uh, can be compressed, and we only start to reference um, the changes to the image so maybe the human is here and the maybe the animal is somewhere here so when they move from one frame to another we only um we only uh, store the changes and all the other frames we know that is still the same so we need to keep that still same uh, frame we only store okay so that human moved a little bit here so we we still store the human or only the, the new position of the human, but we don't need to store the whole frame because we know it's only uh, um, just small differences from the keyframe. Did I make sense? Yeah. So uh, what is a keyframe? It's a frame that have uh, critical data or information. Uh, so it is. it can be a video or it can be uh, uh, in a robotic vision or something like that. So now you have to uh, answer that, and and that is uh, mentioned clearly in the uh, in the case study. I mean, it, it, they don't mention the. I mean, they mention the keyframe. They talk. They talk about keyframes, but not uh, definition, of course.
So we have to do selection for um, what images that we need to process because processing images and analyzing images is expensive, especially computationally on, on top of uh, your robot uh, uh, processors or, or computer. So we have to select keyframes and um, because, okay, the robot is moving. So if the robot is moving or the camera itself is moving, so, okay, we can start to, to uh, consider keyframes, but if the robot is not moving and then we are taking same images, so it means that these images is not important. So we don't need to, to keep processing them and analyzing them and trying to extract features from them. So uh, you have to understand that this kind of CNN is actually expensive. Expensive in terms of computational uh, uh, processing. Okay, so we cannot analyze every picture. We have to be selective. So that's why key frame is uh, is very important. Did I make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's not about storage at all. It is about the computational uh, uh, processing. Okay.
So, okay, um, let, me, let me try to clarify this uh, answer for you. Um, you are touching part of the answer. Yes, it's true. So sensor noise or limitation means that uh, there could be a sensor noise. It's true that uh, um, sensor is not accurate. Sensor also could be uh, fail. Maybe the robot is moving fast or maybe the environment does not have a, a distinct feature that makes a robot is able to recognize the environment. So he will lose track. He, he will not be able to recognize where he is now. So the solution for that is he have to take pictures for the current environment and start to do matching from his previous data uh, to start to recognize where there is a match on the previous uh, taking images for this environment. And from there, he tried to localize himself. So he tried to find, based on the previous data and the current sensor reading or current visual reading, he would try to find a match. And based on that match, he would try to um, recorrect his position, his current position on the map. Else, he will not be able to move. He will move wrongly. Did that make sense? Yes. Okay. So what did we say about uh, um, sensor noise and limitation? What can, can cause that? The causes of uh, sensor noise. Well, there, well, there's a, a lot of factors for that. Uh, yeah. So. So and environment, the last one, environment with a less distinctive feature. Okay, so it means that yeah. Uh, if yeah, so did you did you manage to get this? Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Continue, please. Okay, close the open again. 